Does the coronavirus have you all scared and nervous about what you need to do to support your immune system while you're trying to get pregnant? If so, check out this video. Before we begin this video, I want to quickly announce that to celebrate the 100,000 subscribers I'm doing a live where I'm talking about my five favorite fertility supplements for 2020. Click the link below to register for this live masterclass where I'm going to share my fertility supplement protocol with you. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Sklar, the fertility expert, and I want to help you get pregnant naturally. So if you want my help to support you during your journey, then I want you to hit that bell so that you know when I'm putting out my next video for you. Okay, so now we need to get into all the details surrounding boosting our immunity to support your fertility during the coronavirus, right? So here are the details. First and foremost, um, and as always, I've got my notes, my trusty notes right here, so that's why I look down sometimes. You know, supporting your fertility right now is probably one of the most important things that we can, do, can be doing. Many people are taking a little pause or hiatus from actually actively trying because they're concerned about contracting the virus and what it might mean for a pregnancy. A lot of those things are actually still up in the air, we don't know, and actually because we don't know the impact of the virus on a pregnancy and potentially the fetus, um, right now we're taking a more conservative approach and asking patients to maybe hold off and use this time to support their bodies, their health, so that they're ready to get pregnant when the time comes. If you're in an environment or in a city that has a low impact from the virus and it's not a big deal for you, then maybe right now is a fine time to try. Or if you're actively going to try, which is okay, then you've got to stay away from other people and big populations. So this is a time where you're actually going to seclude yourself and isolate yourself from others. I just had a text exchange with um, one of my followers, followers who was asking me if it was okay for her to try. And I said, it's okay if you're going to make sure that you and your partner stay away from other people, then I don't have a problem with it. If you're gonna be out and about or potentially be exposed because there's a high exposure rate in your area, then it might not be the best time to do that. But again, all of this comes back to what do we need to do so to support our bodies and our health and our immunity so that we're ready to fight the virus now and make sure that our bodies are better prepared for the future when you are ready to, to start trying. So. You know, even though you're not actively trying right now, it doesn't mean you can't use this time to your advantage. And one of the things that I want to um, discuss is what's really the importance of supporting our immune system right now if we're not going to try? I mean, this was a question that I was uh, that I was recently asked. And also, what's the impact of your immune system on fertility? And so that's really where I want to start right now is because many of you don't understand the connection between your immune system and a healthy immune system and your fertility and reproductive health. So one, right now, given the significance of the virus, its impact on our world and our overall communities, we wanna make sure that we minimize our exposure and that we don't have any contact with the virus, or if we do, it's quick and it resolves itself very quickly. So boosting our immune system right now is just important, period, because we wanna make sure that none of us get sick. Number two, implantation. Implantation is essential piece of, obviously it's an essential piece of getting pregnant. Uh, this is the time where the embryo starts to implant and burrow into the uterus and the endometrium. And when this happens, the body potentially wants to push the embryo away. It's a foreign object and the body views it as kind of invading its territory. And just like any other thing that's trying to invade the body, it tries to push it away and does not want to let it get into the body. And so implantation is this little kind of battle between the body and the embryo. We want to make sure that our immune system is not hypersensitive or active, that it's going to push it away. So that's the other reason why we want to support our immune system so that we can have a healthy immune system and that implantation is not hindered in this stage. Number three is for holding a healthy pregnancy. So just because implantation happens doesn't necessarily mean that the pregnancy is going to go on and be healthy moving forward. And so if we want a healthy pregnancy throughout and we want to make sure that we get out of the first trimester, then holding on to the pregnancy is really important. And this is also an important piece 
of supporting our immune system and making sure that it can hold a pregnancy. So for those of you who have had multiple miscarriages or losses, or maybe thought you had a chemical pregnancy, but you weren't sure, these are all reasons why we wanna support the immune system and have healthy immune function, okay? This is especially true for all of you who have had multiple miscarriages. We wanna make sure that this is no longer gonna be an issue for you. And if you already know that you are immune compromised, you've been tested because you've had multiple miscarriages or losses, and you know that there's an immune issue, then for sure, you wanna make sure that um, you're supporting your immune system right now and you're taking, taking care of yourself so that you don't have any additional losses during this crazy time. And so now we're gonna get into what we can do to support our immune system. So we already talked about why. Now, here are the four key pieces of things that you can be doing. Number one is we wanna eat a well-balanced diet. I can't tell you how often I have gone to the store recently, so much as like three days ago, I went to the grocery store to get something for my wife, and I was amazed to see that the things still left on the shelves were actually all the healthy, good things that we all want. And the things that everybody was buying was, was all the junk. They were buying all the things that we shouldn't be eating. And that's not gonna take care of your immune system right now. Right now we want a healthy diet, lots of fruits, lots of vegetables, and lots of healthy things. So here are some key things that I want you to listen to and pay attention to when we're talking about diet. First and foremost, we wanna eat foods that are higher in vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc. So some foods that are higher in vitamin A are gonna be sweet potatoes, carrots, tuna, butternut squash, and spinach. Some things that are gonna be higher in vitamin C for all of you are gonna be kiwi, bell peppers, strawberries, oranges, and broccoli. Vitamin D outside of the sun, obviously. Salmon, mushrooms, tuna, eggs. You can have fortified dairy products, which are, they add in the vitamin D. My ideal way to get it would be really going outside and spending some time in the sun, which doesn't just benefit your vitamin D, but also benefits your overall health and sanity in these times. And then zinc comes from meats, lentils, yogurt, and grain free or gluten-free, excuse me, oatmeal. So those are some key areas and foods that you want to be incorporating into your diet right now as it pertains to getting those key micronutrients that we're looking for. Obviously, some things for all of us to also recognize is that there are certain foods that most of us are highly reactive to and sensitive to, and we wanna be more careful with those right now. So I do still recommend right now avoiding gluten products. I'm not the biggest fan of a lot of dairy products right now. I wanna make sure that you're avoiding trans fats and hydrogenated oils. And making sure that this is a key category for, for many of us is that when we're trying to boost our immune system, that we avoid nightshades. Nightshades can put a, a little bit more of a strain on our immune system. And so it's an ideal time to avoid those. For those of you who don't know what nightshades are, some key ones are tomatoes, white potatoes, eggplants, peppers, those are the key kind of big nightshade family uh, foods that I typically recommend avoiding. The second most important thing that you should be doing right now is regular exercise. Regular exercise is also a key piece to boosting our immune system. And right now, since most of us are home and not doing much, then this is the time to start doing regular exercise. My family, we've been taking a daily walk for about an hour. We try to start our day that way, although that doesn't always happen, but we are getting out at some point during the day for a nice long walk to be active. That's definitely something you can be doing is starting your day with a nice walk. Another thing you can do is start your day with some yoga to make sure that you get the blood moving. There's lots of different ways that you can start to be active or continue to be active during this time. Push-ups, sit-ups, little sprints or running, you know, um, jumping jacks. Get outside, try and do it in some fresh air, but exercise right now is key and there's no reason that you can't get out and walk as long as you're avoiding other people. The third thing that is a key piece to boosting our immune system is making sure that we're managing our stress and trying to find enough time to relax in these crazy times. When it comes to managing stress, first and foremost, I want you to stop watching the news. I also wanna make sure that you don't spend your whole day watching either Netflix, the news, or on social media because you're gonna be inundated with all sorts of things having to do with the coronavirus and that doesn't 
help your anxiety levels or your stress levels. I have found that the more that I'm watching the news or online, that the more anxious I'm getting. And so I imagine that's the same for all of you. So what we wanna do is isolate that time to some key times of the day. Maybe you just say at the end of the day, I'm gonna catch up with my news and any other updates on social media having to do with the coronavirus. And outside of that, you make sure you put it away or that when you do go online, or on social media, it's for specific things and not to get caught up in the craziness of the virus right now. Other things that you can and absolutely should be doing to relax yourself, de-stress, and stay calm is meditation and yoga. I mentioned yoga before for exercise, but it also falls under the de-stressing and staying calm side of things. So it's uh, a great thing that you can be doing for both of those two points that I was um, stating. And uh, there's tons of great apps or YouTube videos that you can be doing that are all free that can help guide you through that and through the meditation piece. I have worked into this video some meditation and some yoga practices with my kids that you can check out right now to help you get started. So for those of you who have never meditated before, we're gonna meditate right now. My boys are gonna show you how to do that. They're gonna sit up straight on a comfortable pillow, legs crossed, and your hands are either on your knees or in your lap. Okay, and now we're gonna have a long spine. So we're gonna sit up straight, chin down, eyes closed. Good. And now we're gonna start with a breath. And when we breathe, we breathe with our belly, not our chest. So we breathe in slowly. Until your lungs get full, and then you're gonna breathe out. Good, and we breathe in through our nose. and out through our mouth. Good, and when we breathe in through our nose, we breathe in slowly and let our belly fill out. Good. So meditation is very grounding, it's very relaxing. And what we're gonna do when we meditate is we're gonna do this for at least three to five minutes every day. It's great to start your day like this. It's also great to end your day like this, but you can add it in wherever you like. Okay, so yoga is also a great form of exercise that you can do at home, especially while you're um, alone and you can't get out. And so there's lots of different other ways that you can do exercise, but yoga is a great one. And there's lots of great apps or videos on YouTube. And here's a couple of different poses that you can do. So one is downward dog. Good, it's a stretch. And the other one is child's pose. Awesome. And if you wanna to start to do some more difficult poses, there are plenty of those that you can start to do at home, and this is just one of those. I can't do that, but he definitely can. The fourth thing, and I talk about this all the time, sleep. Sleep is really, really important, and I've actually been using this time where I don't have to wake up early to get my kids to school or for work to get some extra hours of sleep. This is the time for you to catch up on your Z's, make sure you're getting at least seven and hopefully more hours of sleep every night. And if you need some additional support to help you fall asleep, that's where you, maybe you give yourself a nice cup of relaxing tea before bed, um, unwind. This is not the time to start watching more social media or watching TV. It's also not the time to binge watch and keep catching up on all of your Netflix videos. This is the time to catch up on your sleep. So make sure that you hit these four key points when we are talking about boosting our immune system. But number five for all of you is supplements. So I'm gonna get into some details having to do with supplements right now. Okay, so in my last video having to do with the coronavirus, I did talk about some key micronutrients and I'm just pulling that up. And so these are some key foundational nutrients that I want all of you to make sure that you're working into your daily vitamins. Vitamin C, zinc, vitamin D, selenium, and vitamin A. I also recommend a great probiotic. Okay, with all of those points, just make sure that you don't overdo it on any of them. And the key ones that I wanna make sure you're actually really careful with are vitamin A and vitamin D. I want those dosages to be a little bit lower. There was actually a little bit of research 
that was just confirmed that showed higher dosages of those two nutrients actually didn't work in your favor with the virus. So I wanna to stick to like one to 2,000 of vitamin D and vitamin A. I prefer that you get this, this micronutrient from your food like we talked about before, but if you need a little extra, then you can get it in supplementation, but I wouldn't go above, let's say, 1,000 or 1,500 right now, and hopefully the rest is gotten from your food. So supplements are really important, as we've been saying. My boys and my entire family have been getting, they always get supplements or some vitamins, some key vitamins, and now, even more so than before, they get these daily for their immune system. We're gonna, so we're going to give you two drops here. Open up. And then we're gonna do two drops here. And we're gonna do one little spray, open. They don't always like it, but it's important. So like I said before, everybody gets vitamins. So Levi just got some, now Elijah's gonna get his. Okay, two, okay. And then everybody's favorite, the spray, which is an antiviral, which is why they get it. All right, so those are the key foundational ones. Some other things you can be doing to activate your NK cells is um, black seed currant or a nice mushroom blend, medicinal mushroom blend, which is some of my favorite things to take. And I do take these actually every day. When we are talking about boosting our immune system, we are also typically talking about boosting our Th1 response. So this is a specific pathway in the body. One of the best things to do that is going to be glutathione or NAC, which is a precursor to glutathione. You can also add in some broccoli and ginger to to support these pathways as well. The next key area is to main proper cytokine balance. And I know some of these areas, don't worry so much about the titles, it might be a little bit over your head, that's okay. Focus on the nutrients within those that help support those functions. So to support and maintain proper cytokine balance, we wanna also add in curcumin or turmeric right? And this is a nice one to, to add in. It helps with a lot of other things like inflammation, but it also helps in this area as well. And then last but not least, when we're talking about supplementation, we want to support our stress response and our ability to sleep. So getting in some nice adaptogens to support our stress response is really a nice way to do that. And then if you do need some additional support when it comes to sleep, melatonin is actually a great way to do that. And right now, there was actually a recent study that talked about melatonin and how it was actually enhancing the body's ability to fight off the coronavirus. And they were showing or talking about how children and young teenagers are, they're more able to fight the virus. And the, the reason for that, or one of the theories behind that is because their melatonin levels, it's much higher. And so they've been able to fight that off. There is a specific pathway that that's happening with. But again, we're getting into the whole chemical side of things, which I don't think many of you really care about. So I'm going to leave that out. But that is a key piece to fighting off the coronavirus that we have been finding out through research. All right, so the last piece that I want to talk about when it comes to supplementation is actually Chinese herbs. Chinese herbs have been found to be very, very effective in fighting viruses. And that is very true with the coronavirus. So much so that right now in China, they're utilizing Chinese herbs in um, great amounts to support and prevent the virus from being contracted. And once those who do contract it, they are using it with a different formula to support their overall health and lung function. So if you can speak to someone and consult with someone who is qualified to prescribe Chinese herbs and who can support you and order those things for you, then I do recommend that you reach out and get that started as well. I want you to comment below and let me know what's the one thing you're doing now or that you're going to do to improve your fertility and your immune system during the coronavirus. So comment below. If you want some guidance and support to figure out what's the best combination of things that you should be doing or taking, then I want you to sign up for Discovery Call. That's where you can speak to me and my team so that we can figure out the right plan for you. To sign up for Discovery Call, just click right over here or use the link below in the comment section.
Remember to click the link below to register for the live training coming up where I'll be sharing with you my five favorite fertility supplements to get pregnant in 2020. All right, so hopefully you found this video useful and it's gonna help you support your immune system and support you during your fertility journey. Remember to leave a comment down below and give this video a big thumbs up. And remember to subscribe to my dad's YouTube channel. That's right, do exactly what they both just said and I'll see you in the next video.